One of the most common questions I hear from Muslims is, how can God die? Stated in its full force, the objection goes something like this. Christians believe that Jesus is God, and Christians believe that Jesus died. So Christians believe that God died. But God is eternal and unchanging and all-powerful. What sense does it make to say that God died? If you're not clear on what Christians believe, this is a perfectly reasonable question to ask. To answer the question, I'm going to state the Christian view so that everyone knows what we're claiming. Then I'm going to try to help Muslims understand our view by drawing attention to certain Muslim beliefs. In the first verse of the book of John, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word was in the beginning before anything was created. Verse 3 says that everything was created through the Word. The Word was with God, indicating that there's a distinction in the Godhead, later to be fully clarified as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Word was God, indicating that the Word was, by nature, in essence, God. Verse 14 goes on to say that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is referring, of course, to Jesus. So Christians aren't saying that God, as He exists in Himself, eternal and incorruptible, died one day. The Christian claim is that the second person of the Trinity, who is God, entered creation taking on human flesh so that He could be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. That's what Christians are claiming. So how can a Muslim maintain that our view is somehow incoherent? Here our Muslim friends might say that God can't enter into His creation. But as a Muslim, you shouldn't say this. In fact, if you say that God can't enter into His creation, you're contradicting the Quran. In Surah 27, 7 through 9, we read, Call to mind when Moses said to his family, I perceive a fire. I will bring you from there some news of great import, or I will bring you a flaming brand that you may warm yourselves. So when he came to it, he was called by a voice, Blessed is he who is in the fire and those around it, and glorified be Allah, the Lord of the worlds. O Moses, verily I am Allah, the mighty, the wise. So a voice says, Blessed is he who is in the fire, and Allah speaks out of the fire. Who's the blessed one in the fire? Allah. If Allah can enter into his creation and speak out of a fire, can't he enter into his creation and speak out of human flesh? The correct Muslim answer is, yes, of course God can do that. He's all powerful. Christians and Muslims then have to agree that God can enter into his creation. But perhaps a Muslim will say here, okay, God can enter into his creation, but if he does, how can he die? Good question. In response, let me illustrate by pointing out what Muslims believe about the Quran. This is a Quran. This Quran, according to Islam, has two natures. On the one hand, as the eternal word of Allah, it has no beginning. It was not created. It cannot be destroyed. On the other hand, this Quran is made of paper and ink and glue. These are physical materials. Now, a man in Florida once had a burn the Quran day. I don't approve of burning books, but the event did raise an interesting question for purposes of this discussion. Muslims ask, how can God die? As if this somehow refutes the Christian view. But let me ask, how can the eternal word of Allah be burned? The correct Muslim response here is, David, as Muslims, we're not saying that when someone burns a Quran, Allah's eternal word is destroyed. No. When someone burns a Quran, the paper and ink and glue that make up the physical nature of that Quran are destroyed, but the eternal nature of the Quran remains unchanged. Interesting. Let me see if I understand. The eternal word of Allah, which is uncreated and indestructible, enters our world as a physical Quran, which is created and can be destroyed. If this Quran is destroyed, Muslims won't say that Allah's eternal word is destroyed. They'll simply say that the Quran has two natures, an eternal nature and a physical nature, and that it's the physical nature that can be destroyed by burning. But how is this so very different from the Christian claim that the Divine Son, the eternal Word of God, became flesh and dwelt among us, that He entered into His creation as Jesus of Nazareth, and that once He had taken on human flesh, His physical nature, since it was created and perishable, was capable of dying, even though His divine nature could not die. If our Muslim friends insist that it's a problem for God to take on a physical form which can be killed, 
we can only conclude that it's also a problem for the eternal word of Allah to take on a physical form which can be burned. Isn't it amazing how Islamic theology ultimately undermines Islam's most common objections to Christianity?